feel like it's the Brady Bunch. <laughs> it does feel that way. <clears throat> I promise not to sing. Okay, we are live on YouTube. So I'm going to block my video so that everybody else has a larger screen. And uh, I'm going to be around in case there are any technical issues. Thanks, Cliff. Thanks, Cliff. You're welcome. Thanks, Cliff. Victor just joined. Great. And Sally's here. Hi, Sally. I think Sally left. I think she left. Okay. Victor's here. Just, Hi, Victor. Hi, Victor. Do you, want to try, do you want to try your camera? I just logged in and tried the camera. I had the same problem as yesterday. Huh. <laughs> All right, so we can't see you. No, and I think uh, I didn't get I didn't get the chance to talk to um, Cliff. I know he was trying to check my software, etc., but I didn't hear back from him. But let's not bother him as long as you can hear me. <clears throat> Cliff, Cliff is on. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I sent you an email, but I guess we just didn't link up today. But oh, we can take sorry. care of it at another time. Yeah, I'm sorry I was busy. Was... Yeah, no problem. My, what's the problem my, at my end? My software? Um. But we'll follow tomorrow. I don't want to take time now. Sure. Yeah. Okay. 489. I'm just going to let Augie get off the phone and we'll start, okay? Yeah. Oh, nine, three. Okay, they're waiting for me to start. 489 738 093. I'm sorry, Dan is trying to connect. He called me. Four eight nine seven three eight zero nine three. Okay. Yeah, it says wait. The, I'm waiting for you. The world will begin soon. Okay. So you can start. Are you here, Dan? Um, it says please wait. The webinar will begin soon. Did you start? 
started yet? It, the webinar has started. Everybody's here. I don't see you in. Okay. You have to update uh, Dan, Cliff. Okay, I'm in, but I think that uh, my camera isn't working. It's okay. Okay. There we go. Oh, there we go, Dan. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Everybody good with that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, my name is Kelly Wenstrup. I'm a trustee in the village of Amerinek. Um, Our mayor is not here tonight, Tom Murphy. So I'll be um, running this work session of a um, our budget. Um, I want to welcome the public who's watching. And though this is a work session and there isn't an opportunity to comment, um, we do love to hear from you at all times. If you want to email us at mayor and board at vomny.org. Um, that's also on the village website. So we welcome your comments at any time. Um, with that introductory statement made, I wonder if we could entertain a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. All? Aye. 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 We're opened. All right, um, Jerry, can I start with you and have you introduce um, our discussion? And then today we have presentations by the Harbor Master Parks and Recreation Departments. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we could start off and, and maybe um, have him uh, go home a little early this evening. We could start off with Joe Russo. Sure. Joe Russo uh, went through the budget a couple of times. Um, and his budget was cut 15.12% already this year. So um, let me get to the page where Marine starts in our booklet. We are at page, let me flip this. 136. Jerry, on the supplement, it's page 134. 134, okay, thanks. 134 of 179, so we're all in the same document. And it's dated, mine's dated March 12th of 2020. I have the same. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So Joe, if you wanna go through it a little bit, um, you got the board's ear right now. Okay, uh, I did sit with Jerry and Augie on several occasions. <laughs> Jury's made a decision to move the office assistant position over the recreation department. We'll see how that works out going forward. Uh, also, in part-time salaries, Kristen was taken out after this cycle. We still have seasonal labor in there. And we haven't used it in the past, but more than likely we're gonna use it this year. The question I had with that, Jack, can we also use that as an inside person in the office yeah, uh, so That's seasonal right. seasonal is seasonal. The the restriction with seasonal is the four month restriction. Other than that, you can use a seasonal employee wherever you need to. Okay, that's good to know. Just in case we get backlogged during yeah. the summer, mm -hmm. we could try it out that way. Mm -hmm. sure. We've made other uh, we added overtime because we usually didn't get that in the past, so that's been added to the budget. <laughs> Miscellaneous basically stood the same. You see purchase repla uh, replacement equipment and repair. There's $6,000 there. We haven't used it, but it's good to keep there. If something does go down that we have to replace parts, especially with the crane or the fireboat, it's quite expensive. We stood the same with our clothing allowance all the way through. The radio equipment is only 300. We leave it in there. We have a radio in the office, two on the boats. If one goes down, we use that to uh, 
that fund to replace the radio. The seawall maintenance has been removed. It was only $4,000. We're all aware that we have a big project coming up with the seawall and we can incorporate it with that. Any minor repairs that have been done the last two years have been handled by our DPW. I've been putting a work order to Tony and that's for minor tripping hazards that occur around the wall. Forms, applications, permits. We stood at that at the same 2800. That's all our applications we have printed up. Uh, that go out for renewal seats, postage, basically the same. We do all our postage, we send them out. We also do our ramp permits uh, through the postage, so we left that as it is. Dues, that's 300 bucks. Uh, all these dues here, Coast Guard license is 500 bucks. That's due next year to renew every five years. Twix is a transportation workers identification card. That has to also be renewed every five years. That's up, that's 100 bucks. The other one is for dues, Harbor Masters Associations and various other ones that come up. Marine law enforcement, we leave that in there in case there's a class that I would like to attend. I usually stay in touch with Sal from New Rochelle and other Harbor Masters. But if a class comes up with the Harbor Masters Association, I would go for it if it was useful for us. Automotive, automotive repairs, we left at 2,500. That also involves the crane. The crane is quite old. There's, some, there's still a ticket that's gonna hit on that for one part, which was 1400 bucks. It was for a recoil uh, spring on the top that brings the cables back in when we're using the boom. Fuel and oil and lubricants. Uh, we had 2300, we bought it down to 2000. Mm -hmm. Jerry, I, I, I feel that maybe we, excuse me. Agreement. You said that uh, automatic, I, that, not does it matter a lot, but just to follow to see if I'm on the right page, you said automatic repairs stays the same, but it actually increases to $1,000. Not much, but it does increase. Let me see one. Second. You said it stays the same. Just to see I'm not sleeping. Oh, oh, 0470. 0407. Sorry. You 0407. See, you can't see me, but I'm hearing. Okay. I see we have 2500 for the for the Ford 250. And one thousand for the crane. So you're talking about the crane. Ah, it's uh, the crane. Here. Okay, got it. Yes. Okay. As a fuel, oil lubricants. This is that we use for the crane, the, the work boat, Harbor One boat. Certain oils. Uh, Jerry, if you'd like, I, I think we could drop that possibly to fifteen hundred. Okay. Instead of the two thousand. Uh, last year, I, I was it. not able to get out a lot to, to do our inspections of the mooring fields on Large Barn Harbor. I plan to get out there this year, but I still think 1500 would be enough to, uh, you know, would be okay in that area. Okay. The Harbor Master Building Heating Unit, we left the same. It's a fairly new unit, but we do have repairs that come up with it. So we left it at that. Island Paint Chains Miscellaneous Hardware, we increased that to 5000 from 3500 uh, we're coming to the season now. As you know, we got dock repairs coming up through a contractor. We also have our own repairs. There are chains, shackles that have to be replaced. Uh, bottom paint is very expensive. We'll have to get a gallon or two of that to do our, our two boats. Well, one boat now, we did paint one, and we have the uh, all the buoys that have to be painted. So the $5,000 there, it, it, we're up to 2981 I think it's a good deal to leave it to five. Charts, film, and development. We really haven't used that in the past, but it's only 300 bucks. In case we do want to take a shot or something of the harbor and aerial, I don't know what that would cost, but we left that in there. Heating for the building, it was 3,500. We bought it up to uh, 4,000. That depends on the winter and who's working in the shop. If they want to leave it on 70, the, the heating bill a little higher. So we left it at that. Building maintenance. We left at seven. Uh, in case we do need some siding repair, roof repairs, it, it does add up, it's there. The office and West Space and locker rooms is 1500. We're always painting the floors in there. We're doing repairs on the lockers that are in there. We haven't used much uh, this year, but we are gonna be painting the floors in there. Uh, I figured we'd leave that in there. As far as we have a pump unit, $3,000. Uh, a new pump out unit would cost us probably around $3,700. Uh, 
uh, a pump unit there, we would get reimbursed from the clean vessel uh, assistance program. Uh, we'd pay probably about 30%, they pick up to 70. Each year, as you know, we submit a reimbursement form. I believe this year we received back the $2,000 for the repairs that were done during the season, which was great. We've got gate, uh, locker, keys, PVC, water, and lumber. This is basically for repairs for the fishing dock. We did order some lumber uh, last year. We still have some left. As I've mentioned in the past, right now, we're, we're kind of piecemealing our repairs. As I wrote in my memo, we do have to do a, start a program of replacements of docks. There's $7,000 in there. Uh, there's 35 for each. The fishing float, we patch it every week. Uh, we, we, we've got lumber here we use sometimes. We have to order special lumber because of 10 foot sections. I left the $7,000 in there because I don't know what's gonna happen this season as far as dock repairs. So basically that's what we, we had with our budget. I'm open to any ideas or suggestions uh, to improve it, but that's where we left it off. Joseph, I think you should talk a little bit about um, the revenue impact Yes. If we don't open until August 1st. Okay. Yeah, I did a comparison quickly. I didn't have time to go through all the sheets this afternoon. Army okay. Corps was here this afternoon. Okay. As of now, of, of April 1st, from 2020, we have taken in 304000 In 2019 to this so, day. Sorry, sorry, slow down. Slow Excuse down. Me? I'm going back to revenues now. Yes. So we're all on the same page. So yep. I'm just giving. Okay, I'm just giving revenues. Where are we? Let me see. Let me see. Okay, Morn mornings and floats on the, that Sarek section. Okay, got it. Got it. I'm there. Okay. okay. All I did today was look up a comparison from last year, April first, to this year, April first, uh, 2020. This year we're up to 304,000. 2019 we had 307,000. Uh, 219, we had a few more applicants that were in the system already. I believe now, uh, I think we're going to be pretty close to what we took in last year. We do have people stopping in. They haven't renewed yet because they're worried about, is the marina going to open? Uh, is it going to be on time? Uh, is it going to be shut down? Do we get a refund? So I think once this virus is over with and we see the direction to go in, I, I think our revenue will be pretty close to exactly what we took in last year. That's taken into effect. We had a, a fee increase. We have a few people, of course, that left us, and we have a handful that have also joined us. So uh, I, I think for the physical year, we're going to be close to what we topped out as last year, which I believe was roughly around 410. Joe, if we prorate and yes. we only receive... Um, or let's just put it this way. If we eliminate two months yep. of revenue uh, mm -hmm. and from, from, the, from the dock fees and the moorings, um, we take a $70,000 hit, according to this little nifty spreadsheet that Jonathan and Augie okay. provided me. So that's where, that's where the discussion needs to go. Um, Obviously, your budget is tight. You've already cut it. So that $70,000 is difficult to recuperate within the Harbor Master's budget. But for the board's edification, we could be, we could be looking at a potential $70,000 impact just, at, uh, just for Harbor Master um, uh, associated fees. I'm not worried about the boat ramp. That's, that's mm. a couple of thousand dollars. Um, and, and I'm not worried about your miscellaneous fees, but... That's all I had to say about that. Jerry, I, I think if I have, hopefully from what I'm hearing from other marinas, I've been talking to Dua Shell, Rye, hopefully by the middle of May, we'll be open. And I think as long as that happens, nobody will be asking for any prorate or any sort of refund. As you know, our season officially starts May 1st and November 1st. Usually if all things are well, we open up the third or second week, even sometimes in April. We do allow our boaters to stay into November 11th. I'm sure they're aware of this. So yeah. I think with a little luck, as long as we can get the thing, everything rolling, hopefully by mid-May, I think we'll be okay. But there was one indicator today, um, seven or eight states got together yesterday. The governors got together yesterday and had this conference call and they weren't very specific. But um, early this morning, the governor from Connecticut 
said that he's not going to talk about any kind of reopening plan until May 20th. So it looks like that, or at least I feel that the governors maybe decided yesterday to keep the pause on until May 20th. Okay. Um, after that, they may just say certain businesses can open up June 1st, certain businesses can open up July 1st. I'm not really sure. Um, but that's the indicator that I have right now, just being a news junkie and just watching and, and reading news all day long. Yep. So it could be um, it could be a month and then people may not you know, complain too much. Uh, but if it goes two months and there's only one month left of the summer, um, you know, there could be some some uh, financial impact on the doc fees. Well, it also also people can't get their boats ready to go in the water until May twentieth. It well, what's may happening? Not launch. But what's happening now? The, the phones are constantly <laughs> people are coming in, and I'm, I'm sure the boat yards will work along with our, with, with these customers. Their their fee schedule says April fifteenth. You're out of here. So everybody's calling in a panic, saying, "I have nowhere to put my boat." You know, are we opening or not? Wow. Uh, yeah, April 15th is usually it. And they usually charge you a fee, you know, so much for the day to stay at the marina. Uh, so far, I've been in touch with Nichols. They've been very lenient with their customers working along. They have no one working for the last month that they haven't. There's four boats on the water across the way. I believe there's one commercial guy they have to put in because he's a commercial guy, uh, the Shamrock Party Fishing Boat. I know that Oriana Yacht Club has postponed their launch. I think the third week of May, they're looking. So hopefully by that time, we'll have some good news and we can start getting things back to normal a little. Okay. You know, at that time, as we get close, I'll stay in touch with Jerry. We're, we're sending out emails. We're constantly talking to our customers every day. They still come to the office. I speak to them outside. Kristen's been CCing me on any emails that she gets. So we're on the same page. And believe me, uh, nobody wants to open it more than I do. Uh, Jerry, as you know, we've got that meeting Thursday, which is great. Yeah. And that'll also help us with our time frame. Yep. That's the construction meeting because of the safety, um, because of the safety repairs that we need to make, um, which were deferred from last year. And this year it got, um, uh, the safety concerns were, were much worse. So I'm glad that the board um, was able to approve that before uh, everything started to happen. You thank her, Danny, and you for your input on that, Jack. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Doesn't end, right? No. It's all for me. Anything else? I have a question for, for one question on, on, on your, uh, on the budget, just, just this question. And then I'll, uh, I, I, my main questions really are what Jerry was talking about. My, my only question for, for Joe is, um, and I think probably not just your, your, uh, anybody could answer this, of course. Um, well, I, I, you were starting by talking about your personnel. There's some changes which I don't fully understand. I think it's most on the assistant, your secretary for permitting, et cetera. But on the laborer, is he is he a um, union? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Labor Tina Cimento is union. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then my, my, my only question then follows with to Jerry. Jerry, you were talking about, about a spreadsheet that came in today and had some adjustments. Uh, yeah, it's a yellow, it's a yellow, there's a lot of yellow lines on the spreadsheet. I sent it out to the board uh, after Jason provided more detail. Uh, Jason, do you have the time when we sent out that, that, that uh, email? Uh, sure. I, I, I got two. Let me see if I'm on this right page because what I heard was that there's going to be a, I, I, I was trying to read it. I think it's here. Let me see. Can I share my screen? This is what I got today. Can you see it? Is this, is this what we're talking about? Yeah. 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 Okay. 1111. 111, Jack. Yeah. So, so Victor, got, if you I want to go down. One, and yeah. then I got on top of this one, I got a nice one with other colors that Jason did. I think that's, that's that what we want. That's the one we're using. Yeah, that's the one we're gonna we're gonna do with Jason's the conversation. Okay. Well, I, I'll I'll open that after. I, this is the first one I got. So this is this is the question that I have on 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 income and it and and 
And I'm asking this question, Joe, I'm not, not, not thinking that if there's any reduced revenues, it will affect your, your area, okay? So don't mm -hmm. know where I'm going. Okay. Where I'm going is just to figure out exactly what, what is realistic here. Uh, so what, what, what this table is saying is that the fees will, will be the same, except they're gonna come in later or slower. But at the end of the day, we're still with the same amount. If I go scroll down, I see here the same amount or am I understanding this correctly or not? No, take a look at the next column right there. That this column, one? yeah. The second to the last column, go down. And if you go down to the end of that column, that's the potential loss that we could be realizing in the first two months right there, that 1.319 okay. million. But, you, but, but you, what you're saying is it's just in the first two months. At the end of the year, mm -hmm. you do expect that, our, that our, our revenues would be the ones that are up here. Floats, 345, moorings, 82. Right. Games. So what I did was, what I did was I used, I used the same guess method, which is just a guess, and took 17% um, off of the floats and 17% off the moorings um, in the event that we had to prorate the... Um, we had to prorate the the uh, um, the fees. Um, we would we would we would realize from moorings and floats uh, uh, a reduced amount by seventy thousand dollars. So this this amount would be reduced by seventy five. The, the that would be fifty seven. That would be fifty seven. Hold on, let me just pull my. But that is not in this table. It is. No, it's not. It's the one that I've been working on all day. Is that is that something we sent that out. We sent that out uh, earlier today and, I, and then I just kept working on it and looking at every area. So that one would go to 287,500. That 345, the 345,000 would Can go to 287,500. Which one, which line are you talking? Line 76? Uh, yeah, 76, K76. Okay. That would be 275, 287,500. Okay. And the moorings line 77, K77. Yes. That would go to $68,333. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, those would be the, the only two adjustments on, on, on revenues? That would be just in Joe's area. Okay. So this it, to this to. Yeah. And the total of those two comes to? So, approximately $70,000. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Now I get it. We don't Thanks. have that table. That's the one you have. You're working on your screen. I'm working. I'm still working on it. Yeah. I'm still working on it. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm done. Good. Anything else? Let me see. Anyone else have questions for Joe? No? Yeah. All right, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank have you. a good evening. Thanks, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let me see. All right. Parks or rec? Is any panelists uh, who are raising their hands? Can you give us back the screen? Yeah. yeah. Can I you let me see read something? Just hit the shared screen. I think it should pop off. I don't know if it does. Yeah. There yeah. you go. One, one second. Let me do one second. Let me do one thing here. You know, this this may come handy at some point. What I did here is you see I for certain things I, I did a little exercise over the weekend. I didn't want to I didn't yeah. know if I was gonna share it or not. But what yep. I did here is I have five years. You see, you see the floats. Yep. What I did was I took some of the some that I, I just wanted to keep an eye on and ask questions about. And yep. I did five years. So this is 19, yep. 18, 18, 17, 18. So you do see here that it does make it does make sense, right? To to, to really go around this figures because yep. That's that's more or less what we were receiving a couple of years ago. So yeah, 
So we kind of so, know, from two angles, you get more or less to the same point. I would, but I will offer that you know as, as another another. And and if I can if I can add that this year, um, for about sixty five percent of our um, users at the docks, uh, they um, they had a fifteen percent increase. These were the these were the out of Mamaroneck. These were the out of towners. Mm -hmm that uh, um, we tried to equalize um, as closely as possible to all of the other fees uh, that were associated or, or that are listed um, with New Rochelle and with Rye. So that little bump, you see the 345 projection, that was because of that increase. But you're right, I, I see your 267 number right there. I'm not the boater expert. I don't have a boat other than a kayak and a, and a, and a little floaty. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I remember I was here in, in the in the eighty seven. I I think boats came down. I mean I mean it was probably how I mean there were so many boats for sale. People stopped and it, it was really it was really tough in the in the in the you know ten ten years ago. I think it came down severely. Anyway, no more, no more from me. All right. Uh, let's move on to parks or rec. Jerry, who would you prefer to go first? Barry should go first, even though right. he's been stuck at the house, which is where we want him to stay. <laughs> and um, he hasn't really had time, I don't think, to get in front of his computer and go over his budget. Um, so what I offered was some suggested cuts to his budget, which he has to still review, because I worked on that this afternoon and I didn't provide it to him until late. Um, but if he wants to review those while um, we have other budget meetings, we can do that in a subsequent night, or he can do it right now if he wants to. Yeah. What's your preference, Barry? Sorry, Jerry. Um, I, I got what you sent me on the cuts, and I think that's what we talked about when we sat down, me, you, and Augie, and we were going over everything. I think the cut actually what we said um the only one i'm wasn't sure about but we could talk about if we want to i think the budget is almost staying the same i could just tell you what we talked about and reducing and what we eliminated if that's fine no, you, you can do that. Talk about that i have additional cuts Th this is the email that i got uh, that i sent you with the additional cuts at 4 37 p.m i got that okay good so i'm sharing it okay. with the board now huh, huh, huh. 4.37 p.m.? Yeah, today, yeah. Okay, hold on. This afternoon. I, I got the one that was three. Hold on, let me just see something, okay? So the I'm board got it. Home. I just heard okay. it. Okay, yes, the one I got, correct. <laughs> it's the one I got. Okay, so mostly the budget, <coughs> I, but um, we eliminated the labor position, $39,319. We eliminated um 7110 i don't have my paper in front of me to see what 7110 zero zero one zero zero one is two stipends those were those were stipends for um for additional code enforcement okay uh, so we eliminated those yeah um we reduced our labor to eight thousand eight hundred dollars mm -hmm. we reduced um uh, over time to twenty two thousand dollars we, we took $22,000 out of overtime. And the reason is that a majority of that was US open overtime. Mm -hmm. Now that it seems like, and I'll verify this um, tomorrow, um, no, sorry, Thursday. Jason, when do we have our US open meeting, Thursday? Uh, Friday at two o'clock. Okay, so we'll verify this, but it looks like that they're not, they're gonna have a much smaller well, the scale of the U.S. Open is going to be much smaller this time around uh, in September. So we're not going to have the big influx of overtime that we anticipated um, when they, you know, when they first, when it was scheduled for June. So yeah. that's the reduction in the overtime in there. Okay. Uh, we reduced our snowblower um, to $1,600. Mm -hmm. We reduced auto repairs. Mm -hmm. We have Jimmy doing um, our repairs. So we mm -hmm. saved us about $11,000 so far this year. So we reduced that down to $4,000. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And we eliminated beautification week for $15,000. Mm -hmm. 
a total of $64,319. We cut out of the budget. And, and so it's a, it's a total of $100,719. Excuse me? I'm sorry. It's 100719 So I'm reducing on yep. the, the right-hand column is a reduction. And on the left-hand the left hand column under cuts, that's the elimination. That's what I was recommending to you. To eliminate okay, I, I, I just realized what's on the bottom. I didn't open it up all the way. So $100,000 in cuts. $100,000. So, and we can go over Park's budget if the board wants to. Uh, help me with the page. Uh, 102. 102, thank you. Uh well, actually, 103. 104. 103, yes. Slides on Any questions where the um, where the reductions, the uh, anticipated reductions are? So, I, I have a question, just about the co the um, stipends for code enforcement for weekends. No. Mm -hmm. um, theoretically, would that would those end up being situations in which the code, the code enforcement people who are parks people who are working weekends might end up um, writing citations that offset the cost of their hours? It's, it's not a floating designation. It would be a designating, it would be designating um, one or two people to right, be able to I, do that. I guess what I'm saying is they would be writing citations. And theoretically, the citations end up in a monetary fine sometimes. They do, yeah. So would that offset? I mean, Could. is that? It just seems like we have such a problem with not being able to have have code enforcement on weekends that that yeah, it's, it's a small amount of money that might solve a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, open for discussion, uh, of course. Can I ask Lori, Laura, or Orgy a question? Mm -hmm. When was the when was the last time we used um, the? 71104212020 Columbus Park West Basin Salt Marsh. Well, what is that in reference to? That's for maintenance of the natural area, all the natural plantings along the uh, the riverbed. It, Which we use or don't years. use? Uh, we we have been doing we have not been doing it on an annual basis, but it's something that we need to take care of every couple of years. And it's contracted it's not, out. Yeah, it's it's not like it because it, 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 it's natural plantings. Uh, weeding that area is a little. It's more than just going in there with a couple of guys pulling weeds. It is where they go in there. They inject the weeds with the uh, uh, the stuff to kill it. It's uh, very there are a few specialized landscapers that do this work. And when was the last time we did it? Any idea? I I, I don't recall. It's been a couple of years though. I think it was one thing you said was the last time we did that. Say that again, I didn't hear it. I said, I think the last time it was done when Rich was here. So it's been it's at least four or five years. Time. All right. So maybe we can do it next year. Okay. 
Dan, can I ask how, how was that? How did that come to be? Were we, the, the were we mandated to do that like everything else? So the, the, how, is the question how the natural area came to be or how we did the maintenance on it? No, why were we, why were we budgeting $38,000 to do maintenance on an area, a specialized area? Why such a specialized area? Because well, we got a grant from Westchester County, I was say 10, 15 years ago on this. Um, at the time, shortly after we uh, planted the uh, planted this, uh, there was a mayor who directed the public works at the time to go in and clear everything out. Uh, the county wasn't happy with that. We had to pay a bunch of money to replant it and then ongoing maintenance of it. Um, and I think the last time we did the work, it was probably twenty dollars to $30,000. I, I remember the name of the company was uh, John Jay Landscaping out of Katona. I'd, I'd have to look at KBS to see how much we actually spent on them. This is the Rushmore walkway? No, this is the natural area along the, um, well, we have two natural areas, one uh, along Rushmore and then the other one at Columbus Park. Uh, along the banks of the Sheldrake River, and I said it's a, it's not, it's not something that you can just go in there with any landscaper to do. But I'd have to, I'd have to look at in KBS to find uh, how much we spent with the contractor back when. As I recall, he was out there for several weeks doing the work. Do you, do you recall that, Barry? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Dan. As I as I recall, the contractor was out there for several weeks. Yes, because um, it's 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 I laborious. The, and the part that took the longest was was them injecting the plants when they were injecting everything. Yeah. Gary, what line is this? I'm sorry. Um, seventy one ten oh four two one twenty. Page one oh seven. If we're not mandated to do it, maybe we can do it next June. Why do we have to do it this June? We can take that out and put back the $10,000 in stipends for um, assistant and code enforcement, which are really two stipends for code enforcement. I'm sorry, I should have included that before in my little um, email. I just didn't know what it was. Dan, you don't think we're under an obligation to continue this maintenance, do you? Under that county I, I, order? Well, I think we, in order to um, maintain the long-term viability of the natural area, you, you do have to maintain it because if it gets in, not to be redundant, invaded by invasive species, I mean, all that stuff is, is gone. So th there is a need to maintain it, to keep it clean. Um, you know, I, it's possible maybe we could do, um, you know, defer it a year or, uh, you know, do, uh, Rushmore one year, Columbus the, the next, maybe keep it on an alternate basis. Oh. Um, there are a couple of experts I could talk to about it, about proper maintenance and the best way to get it done. But I take the, que the question, I think, is is this a requirement by the DEC or is this a best management practice? I, I, it's a best management practice. It, there's not a requirement by the DEC. I mean, the DEC is not going to tell us to kill invasive species. All right. So uh, but, but I'm licensed. I'm licensed now to do that, both with aquatics and with uh, ornamentals. Uh, yeah. I, I, we have the um, we do have the specs floating around somewhere. I can show those to you, Jerry, and you can yeah. We can make a decision based on that. Get them for me. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Because I live across the street from Columbus Park, so give me a hobby, a little hobby to, to <laughs> get plants. The tree committee is anxious to meet. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Barry, just on, Jeb, mm. just on the other point that you were saying that since you're licensed with it and with the way you maintained it and showed us to do Rushmore last year, I think if we just keep it up the way we've been doing it, I think it would be fine. Um, just you can come out on Columbus Park and just give us an idea like you did with us on Rushmore and just show us what you think that should be done so we don't have the same problem that we had the last time. I'll take a look at what Dan gives me. I'm now working on it, completely good doing the job that they're doing. Yeah, I remember the last time we, we spoke to um, uh, Sven Hoger, who 
is our consultant with uh, who works with the HCZM, and this is kind of his his background. And he was he gave us some pointers on it. So I think we we had tried writing up a contract, but I think uh, no one ever bid on it. Again, I'll I'll take a look at it, and I'll I'll forward it to you tomorrow, Jerry. Would you say no one bid on it? I think so. It's 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 been Perfect. a while since I remember. It, it, no one? It's been a while since I, this happened. I'm trying to research my recollection. Then we'll do it ourselves when we have to stop, you know, when we can't, when we can not socially distance anymore, we can work on it ourselves. You want to cut it out of the budget this year and we do it ourselves like you're saying, Jeff? Well, I want to, what I, what I want to do is I want to put back the $10,000 in stipends because that's a new item in the budget. I want to put that, that back and I want to take out the 38. Let's um, do that because then we got the guys that can do it. You just go over and do it like we did last year and we'll do the same thing then. Okay. If that's what the board wants. No. I appreciate that. I think that makes sense. Yep. It does. Yes. So when you say the 10 back are the people of the, the um, stipends? Yeah, the two stipends, the, the assistant general foreman stipend and the code enforcement stipend, which I was going to use both as code enforcement stipend. So I was going to designate two individuals um, to um, be designated to issue tickets when they see minor code enforcement infractions. Okay. Or like when a they're dog brought off a leash, like a dog off of a leash or those kinds of things. Or, or, or if they're brought to someone's attention, I guess too, right? right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you know, it's actually good. Like Joey was saying also like last year, we brought about four or five people dumping leaves and brush on the parkway mm -hmm. center. So that would help out also having those code enforcers on. Yep. Tell you the problem we have. Dogs on the beach. It's right there near Bleecker. They just dump they just dump uh, leaves right onto our property. Right. Our property that we maintain and then it's our problem to to, to clean maintain it up. It, right? Some volunteers cleaned it last weekend. I can tell you that. Yeah. yeah. Spent a lot of money to spruce it up too because it was in pretty poor shape about uh, six, seven years ago. I was talking about a more serious issue we, with, well, and I can't blame people are just uh, desperate to get some fresh air and they're just uh, walking their dogs in our beach. And I, I, I'm glad it's open now because people are, you know, you can, you can, uh, you know, I go out there as well and I see people there taking fresh air and, 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 and appreciating that they can at least walk and come back but a lot of dogs and, and too many now. And we probably have to change those signs as not just a no dog, but no dog, 250, uh, 250 fine and no dogs, uh, you know, uh, year round or something that is more uh, more visible and not to blame, but, but it's because people get used and they, you, sometimes I, I approach a few and they say, oh, I know, I know. And of course, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to become that police. So, but you know, I, it's only when it's very, very gentle that I can do it. Uh, but you know, and I'm not there. I'm not there often, but but when I, it's just becoming too much now. Yeah. All right. Does anyone have any other questions for Barry, or can we let him have some rest? Barry, thank you. Thanks, Barry. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Have a good Thanks night. Feel better, Barry. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Bye. 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 Last but not least, Jason Hello. Pinto. Hi. How you doing? Good. How's everyone? Okay. Do you know what page you start on? I start on page. Why don't wait, Jason? Why don't wait. Why don't wait. Thanks. Thank you, Augie. And, and, but I, I should say at the outset that I want to thank you just for all the work, but for putting this report that you sent to us mm -hmm. in the mail. And what? And I, I've looked at it. I enjoyed looking at it, the results. So thank you for doing it. My pleasure. I we um we enjoy doing it. So yeah. thank you. All right. You know what a rundown is, right? Yep. So a rundown. So we can um I think it was 108, Augie said. 108. Yeah, 108. Good to go. Okay. So we're just gonna run down. Um, my budget. I sent um, Jerry a spreadsheet, and then I believe he sent it to you guys that has um, our deferment of expenses uh, for until June 1st, 2021. 
Um, so I believe you guys should all have that. If anyone doesn't, let me know. Um, but we could share the screen too. Okay, so does everyone have that spreadsheet? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Yep. Thank you. And you're welcome. So we'll start down at um, part-time clerical. Um, you'll see part-time rec clerical originally requested 10,000, bringing that down to uh, bringing that down by 6,000. So requesting a total of 4,000. And um, I just want to give you guys some clarity on kind of how we we got to these numbers because um, it was kind of based off a, a situation of opening up on August 1st. And uh, that's very fluid because we're not really sure. Um, so normally we have a 109 day season in Harbor Island Park. That's for beach, that's for parking. Um, and um, 71 days will be lost if we open up on August 4th. August 1st or 65% of our season. So that's kind of how I'm getting to the number is I'm backing out that way. And um, so I obviously part-time clerical is dealing with beach permits and parking permits. I won't need as much part-time clerical money because there's no one in the office right now and it doesn't seem like we're gonna be there for some time. Uh, we'll go down to the same reasoning with parking booth attendance and full-time overtime. It's the same reasoning. We won't be having events or um, beach overtime. So we were able to reduce those costs um, purely because we won't be open to, to sustain them. Um, so that's kind of it for the personnel. When we get down to camp, that will be additional when we get down to beach, but that's yeah. it for like administrative personnel. Um, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I'm sure. not on the same page. Uh, I, I, I only have your spreadsheet on the income did you send something before? I was working today, I'm sorry. Um, I, yes, I sent yeah. something to Jerry this afternoon-ish. What time? One first, first tab is revenue and the second tab says rec expense deferment to mm -hmm. June 2021. More or less what time, please? Uh, it was around one o'clock. 111. To 111. It just came in again. I just sent it again. All right. Okay, then I'll just open it. And it's the second tab. Second tab. Ah, okay. The problem is the second tab. Okay, they added another tab. Okay, I got it. Yeah, the first tab because it relates to it, the overall okay, revenue. Okay, well, now I got it. Okay, so that's the first section under administrative. So uh, we have 7140, we have 7041, we have 7142, et cetera. So that's the first category administration and those were the proposed costs. The um, original tentative request was 86.6. Uh, the deferment is 32,000, bringing the requested to 54.6. Any questions on that? Okay, just looking. <laughs> Not from me. Where is that in the budget? This is uh, which section in the budget? Uh, so we, I guess, will be page one hundred eight, and you'll see seventy one forty dot oh one twenty part time clerical, and then you'll see. Okay. Uh, then there's a dot after it's so a dot twenty dot twenty five dot thirty, um, and uh, I'm talking about dot twenty. Uh, dot 30 and uh, full time overtime, which is 7140 Okay, got it. Yep. The work time is coming down. Okay, got it. Okay, thanks. So the cuts as it relates to the budget, it's in order. So that's why I'm going, that's why I have a little yep. white yep. space in between. So we, so it helps me think it's blocked out in order of how the budget runs down. Okay. I agree with that. Thanks. 
do you think there's going to be like one less block party or? Yeah, we're getting there. I have. Um... Talk about the, it looks like you eliminated fall softball. Right. Yeah. So if we're going to the next block, I was just, so we had no administrative questions. The next okay. block is leagues. We eliminated. So we, my idea is that even shooting at, you know, my goal, it would be July 15th, which is the halfway point that would give us 55, roughly 50, 45, 44.5, 55 days left in the season. So if we start softball between July 15th and August 1st, we can finish by, uh, you know, end of October, early November, and we would have one condensed season instead of two, instead of having a spring summer okay. season and a fall. So we'll, we'll cut the cost of the fall and we'll maintain the revenue we received already from the spring. So therefore we don't have to refund roughly 25,000 that we already took in for spring, summer softball registration, which is 16 teams and, and it's full. So, mm -hmm. you know, all they want to do is play softball. They're all village residents. They don't care if it's now or in July. So okay. we're holding on to keeping a season and we're hopeful. Now, obviously if we can't, then this projection would change and we would give the money back and there would be no expenses and there will be no revenue as well. And that would be unfortunate. So we got packs fall softball and we just kept the spring summer and the total um, for softball is roughly 23,100 for the fall that we saved. And that includes the land of field lights. That's why it seems a little high, but the, the, the lights are expensive. Uh, so that includes about $10,000 <coughs> savings on the lights from my estimation. And that's basically leagues. Now volleyball you'll see is listed there. I have what our request is. You'll see deferment as zero and you'll see requested change as zero. Um, volleyball is done through a service agreement an 80-20 split. Um, I'm working <coughs> with a contractor to try to figure it out. So it's just gonna be difficult even uh, for me to figure out what our revenue is gonna be. But the only good thing about it is, is that there is no expense. We just received 20% off the top of the gross and uh, we don't have to put anything out of pocket in terms of employee expenses or supplies. Good. Are we, are we on the other tab? We're, we're on the second tab, the deferment. Okay. Expenses. Yeah. And we're on the sec 7141 section where it says softball and beach volleyball. Okay. Um, and those were my proposed cuts to our leagues section of my budget. When does the, when does the beach volleyball season start? Because uh, it would have started this week. It would have started already. Softball. Yeah, it would have started Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> but yeah, this week, we all the leagues, adult leagues were supposed to start this week, volleyball and softball. Okay. That's not happening. Um, Trustee Lucas um, asked about events. That's the next section. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is where, um, as Jerry and me were talking this morning, this is where we actually realize savings um, in terms of cuts because there is no revenue. Generally, there is no revenue. These are free community events, so they only cost us money. We sponsor them. Um, so we're, we're actually realizing savings and, and actual mm -hmm. cuts because it's not revenue-based. Um, so proposing to cut family fun night, um, a thousand dollars in uh, personnel, five hundred in equipment, and eight hundred in contractual. Outdoor movies. We have um, four. I cut two. Hoping we could do an August and September one like we normally do. And if we and if they don't happen, then we don't spend the money. So that's also a good thing. Um, there's really very few personnel costs, and mostly the license fee to rent the movie is really the expense because we, we, we own the blow up screen and the parks over time to mm -hmm. physically inflate the screen would be a few hundred dollars as well. Um, the movie's really expensive, but I, I did cut two. Uh, I also cut out one block party, the July uh, 8th, I think that's a Thursday, the July 8th block party. Um, it doesn't seem realistic to have thousand people on Marinick Avenue congregating in July. Mm -hmm. um, so I cut the block party line in half. Um, now I left the August block party in um, as a preparation and that if there's a chance, maybe we can throw a great party. And if there is no chance, then the money sits there and we return it to the fund balance at the end of the year. Um, that's the way I looked at it on that. And um, the same thing goes for kayaking and uh, revenue um, expenses, excuse me, because 
we're probably not gonna be able to do kayaking classes in June and July. So it's gonna be more like an August to September, like a, a, so I reduced it by half. And those are basically the events and programs that we're tweaking. Um, now you'll go in there and you'll see other lines with like STEM programs. You'll see lines with cooking. Those are all programs that have small individual budgets. budgets. And um, it's also a scenario that if we can't run the program, that we don't spend the money. You know, I don't need to order pots and pans and cooking supplies if there's no cooking class. So it's mm -hmm. not a, an operating expense, which, which, are, which is good. Um, any questions on that section? When would cooking classes, though, they wouldn't resume until the fall, would they? When they Correct. Come? Yeah, they right. wouldn't resume to the fall. A lot of that programming, because we are so um, busy in the summer with operating a beach, a parking booth, a day camp, and uh, like mini camps all the time, a lot of that programming money, like STEM, um, cooking, art, at, um, uh, classes like aerobics, a lot of that we try to do in the fall, winter, um, when we have a little more time. Jason. Yes. We have a couple of budget committee members. Uh, I don't know if they can see the screen, but what you should be doing is sharing your screen so we can see that spreadsheet. Okay. I'm sorry, I realized that late. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we were right in this section right here 7141, family fun night, outdoor movies block parties, one out of two block parties, uh, and kayaking. Uh, there will also see a line for stand-up paddle boarding. The reason that it's not in here is because it is a, um, we own the equipment and the only expense would be um, a reimbursable payroll expense through a contractor, kind of like a service agreement. So if that contractor is not working, they don't get paid. So um, that's why it's not in there. Um, any questions on the events? No, any... but I, want, I have a question going back to the lights. The, the which programs, one? The, the softball and other leagues requiring lights at night. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so is it possible, I mean, is, as I understand it, we have to pay for the lights year round if we use them, correct? Correct. So if we don't use them, we don't have to pay, correct? No. No, there's a minimum yes. demand charge. So the question, I understand what you're asking. So it depends on how much usage kilowatt hours we have throughout the year. Um, so the minimum demand charge probably be, won't be $1,000 a month, which we're paying in the dead of winter now because the lights won't be used for like a decent portion of the summer. But I can't tell you that there will be no minimum demand charge. I think Jerry and Augie and Laura would agree that there's going to be something, whether it's 75% of that 1,000, 50% of the 1,000. I don't know what it could be. We don't uh, know. But it could be something for sure. It yeah. fluctuates based on demand uh, on what we used prior. So it's this convoluted formula that no one understands except them. Okay. But so it, it, so it, it, it doesn't help if we start the programs earlier so we use less lights or no lights? Ideally, what we wanted to do was upgrade the lights so that it wouldn't incur overtime by turning them on. And we could also phase them in, phase them out. Uh, LED, upgrading them to, to a, and, and doing the LED conversion would give us a lot more flexibility. Right now, it's such an antiquated system that it's costing us money every time we're turning on lights, not just for the lights, not just for the electricity, but all the other ancillary costs associated. Um, we've been trying to get them upgraded. Uh, we tried for a grant, we didn't get that. Um, before the pandemic, we started, Jason and I and Barry, we started working with, um, who was it, who was it, uh, Jason? New York Power Authority. Um, right. He, our our um, government liaison, I forget what they call them. Jerry knows the, sign, the name, but like a government of fit person, liaison. And, and so we, uh, were looking, we were looking to upgrade them so we'd have more flexibility and, and more savings associated with, of course, the LED lights, which mm -hmm. would give us a significant savings. And the um, the reduction in overtime for not calling in uh, um, employees to turn the lights on and turn the lights off, which is what we're doing now. So I'm not, you know, I'm not against that that upgrade and that conversion. At some point, it will eventually pay for itself um, fairly quickly. 
we never even got past the the ROI um, the ROI projections. Um, we just we just never got back to the uh, to the individual. He was the uh, he was the municipal liaison for uh, the power authority. And um, for example, just so Jerry's noting, so you can you guys realize what he's saying. So if Larchmont Mamaroneck Youth Soccer Club or Larchmont Mamaroneck Football Club wants to use the field lights. We have to pay, charge them two hundred dollars because a parks employee has to come turn them on, or myself or whoever, mm -hmm. and that's a cost. There, you have to physically put a key in the box, unlock it, and do it. But we're not charging the leagues anywhere near what it costs us. Uh, correct. We're not. No, we're not. We're not. What would happen if we did? <laughs> Jerry, you want to answer that? <laughs> it's a word before mob. There's a word that you put in before the word mob. So that's what would happen. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. We're just trying to eliminate that. We're trying to upgrade. We're trying to eliminate that so that we wouldn't have to. We can continue to not charge them uh, as well as realize the, the savings from the LED. Okay. Are these all village residents or just a part village residents? Do we have any idea of that? For That's softball, a, yeah, they're they're I'd say ninety percent village residents. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the same with uh, soccer as well. Yeah, I mean, well, the youth soccer leagues and the like, baseball, soccer, football, they can't come onto the. They can't. I have a personal policy because of our field usage that they can't use our village land unless they prove to me that they have majority of the children are residents yeah yeah because so many people want to use our field that that is one stipulation that i have and we fulfill a hundred percent of our time slots with that so they're all village residents that use our property so it, have the fees uh when was the last time the fees were raised for yeah. which softball um we raised we raised all the recreation fees a couple of months ago Mm -hmm. Three months ago, four months ago, something. Yeah, like just about October, yeah. Jerry. I think we had it sent it to the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We raised the camp fees last summer. Correct, and uh, this year we raised uh, a parking rate. We raised. Um, we didn't raise day camp because um, we did it field, the year prior. We raised field a use. Field use fee. We went up from twenty-five to twenty-seven dollars per hour. It was a big one. Um, so we raised a few things, but very small percentages. Um, the big the big increases were for non, similar to, to the boat, voting issue, non-resident beach passes, non-resident parking passes. Uh, we raised those up, you know, probably somewhere in the 10 to 15% range, mm -hmm. um, which they were very cheap before for non-residents. Mm -hmm. So, do we want to move on to the beach section? Sure. Okay. So beach, um, the first section is personnel, lifeguards, attendants, cashiers, um, part-time beach manager. So I'm using that same model, that 6535 model. And that's assuming that we're going to have 65 days of cancellation, 35 days open. So that's kind of uh, the, the revenue type thing that we're going with. So Beach Lifeguards is um, brought it down from 27,000 uh, to 9,450. Um, attendance, both each got cut down to 54,25. And part-time beach manager went from 3,000 to 1950, um, to 1050. Um, so those are salaries to support the beach that we won't need because if the beach won't be open for the month of June and July, there's um, that would be the amount that we'd be able to save. Um, the next one is utilities, um, 7142.0415 spray ground. That's just the water bill for spray ground. Um, tentative, we requested 44,000 um, and we are gonna defer 28.6 and plan to only have to spend 15.4 based off that opening of August 1st. Any questions on the, um, and oh, Gunderboom maintenance, excuse me. So every year we budget $19,000 for Gunderboom maintenance. 
Um, that's for repairs, they're very expensive. I'm not anticipating the Gunner Boom is what it is. We haven't had to repair it in a few years. Um, the money has been there for emergency. I'm not anticipating it. Um, so I just left uh, $4,750 for any repair that maybe we can do in house. Joe Russo or the Parks Department could buy supplies and repair something if needed that doesn't involve diving down underneath. And that's can the I, beach. Can I go back to utility water, utilities water spray ground? Yeah. So last year, what were the hours that you ran um, the spray ground and were they different from the, the year before? So they, the beach is open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. For the last two years, we've opened, we've had the spray ground open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The years before that, when I, the, I was here three years before that, or two years before that, we had it open nine to six, the whole full day. So we reduced an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon to cut it down from, you know, to eight hours a day or whatever. Just, just to save some water or you didn't have people, you, no, you didn't have a lot of no, kids had, showing up at nine o'clock? We, we had plenty of people showed up, but I don't know, I wasn't um, the department at the time, but the directive was, I could have been from Rich Slingerland or something, to reduce water, we need a cut back an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. Okay. Any questions about that? Um, next one that I want to highlight is day camp. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty over day camp. Um, we've been speaking about it internally. We've been speaking about it with Jerry. Um, it doesn't look too I, great. I, I shared with the board the Dutchess County decision and your email from, from Saturday morning. Right. Yeah. So that, you know, I've been just researching other places in New York State. And uh, those were two that stood out to me. Now, the Winchester Dep County Department of Health hasn't said much about it other than they, the in-person camp operators meeting at the Westchester County Center was canceled and that they would mail us our permit renewal application, which I did receive. Um, so I don't know, is it, is it realistic to have 300 kids in a, in a building that's not meant to fit 300 kids, even though they're outside a lot, you know, their social distancing is probably not practical at camp. Right. So, um, based off that decision, as of, as of what Jerry and has shared with me this morning, we're going to assume that if camp is canceled, this will be what we can reduce our budget on in terms of camp. Um, so we originally requested 309,200 and you can see uh, the areas in which we need that money. Staff is the big ones followed by supplies and the other big one is fees. Uh, fees include busing and trips. So that's why that number is so big. Our bus contract I think is about like 40,000-ish a year and you know our trips are about 30,000 a year. So uh, where we decided to reduce is now you have, like why wouldn't we reduce down to zero if we're not having a camp? Well, we need the money for next January and February to ramp up for the following camp season. That would be 2021. Mm -hmm. And this is what I am projecting that I will need or my department will need to get that job uh, done, um, which would be staff 31,000 in the um, lower camp and 9,400 in the upper camp. And that's for orientations and director preps and everything leading up to that. We probably won't use that amount, but it's just, it's safe to uh, have it um, if needed. Um, we can also reduce our supplies down. Um, the supplies are generally purchased twice a year, both times in each fiscal year, half and half. So um, we only need half to prepare us for the next season because then we'll have more money to purchase uh, for that. Day camp uh, fees, we don't need a majority of that money. So we're going to defer 64000 and keep 16000 The 16000 would be for camp trip deposits next year. Um, any any um, busing deposit we may or may not need. Um, so that's basically what that is uh, for. So the total amount that we want to defer is 239260 and we want to keep in or request 6994 uh, to hold us over to plan next year's day camp, if, if it doesn't happen this year. And I mean, even if 
this is in the budget. It's not, um, you'd never expend it if you weren't actually going to collect camp fees. Correct. It, what it, about, so, so what about, have you, have you expended, you've already expended fees for a bunch of trips already. Do we get, can you get those back or is that? We're just working on it. So I think we spent, I, I can get, um, my coworker Ali has a, a spreadsheet that she has for me. And I think it's about 6,000 we're up to right now in deposits uh -huh. for trips. We haven't pursued that yet because our trips are still um, penciled in. But as soon as we know, I will do everything I can to get that money back for sure. Um, yeah, we're still in limbo. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, well, and I'm sure some of the places where you've booked trips don't even know if they're going to, they don't know if they're going to be open. There is a lot of uncertainty. You I try. Who knows if you're going to be able to go to a Rockland Boulders or New York Mets game, right? I, I mean, right. we don't know, you know? I mean, like even Dan, I think I was talking to Dan about the bus bid and Dan's like, yeah, we could send a bus bid out, but who's going to get it? You know, if people, if the school bus companies aren't operating, who's going to, you know, so it's just a, it's a very um, tricky thing. But if I can like sum up camp and just like the simplest term I can possibly give is that you spend 309,000, you bring in 345, 350. If you don't have either, you lose like what, 30, 35, $40,000 in revenue. That's really what it comes down to. So there are large numbers in expenses, but there's also a large number that's larger than that in revenue. Any questions on camp? Uh, I have to, I have to say something. So your, um, when he, your budget makes up about 18 pages of our budget book and mm -hmm. you were able to boil it all down onto one spreadsheet. And I really appreciate that very much. Yeah. So my budget's a lot different than last year and I'm not really uh, that elegant at speaking on how we did it, but I think like Laura or Augie can just give you like a 30 second idea on why we changed it so much from the previous year and they can Good. probably do it a lot better than I can. That's a good idea. <laughs> Try to streamline the budget so we can implement more matching to revenues. Currently, each program has, it, everything's built in one account code. So the salaries, supplies in the contractual are all in, like, let's say for example, 7110, 130. We can now match that, rev, that expense code with a revenue code. So we'd actually start presenting reports to the manager more quarterly or monthly on how each program is doing. Right. And that, that was a request. And I appreciate that uh, of Augie and, and Laura and Jason uh, for, for doing that because it took a lot. And it's, it's, um, it's hard to, to look at after a little while because it's, it's just a lot of numbers. But the uh, budget committee had asked us to start looking at that and tracking that. And so this was the first step in doing that. Right. And I will say that we are I've been focusing, and I know Augie and Laura have been helping me focus on tracking it, our expenses, because since I've been here, things have just been like, uh, we don't know where we're spending our money, and it's taken, why are we buying kayaks out of softball money, and like, you know what I mean? So we're just trying to to hammer down and get a real realization on what things cost us to do. How much does this program cost? How much does this event cost? How much does it cost in police? How much does it cost in this? And that's what my goal is, to have for this time next year, a full rundown on what turkey trot really cost the village and mm -hmm. how much revenue we bring in and, and down to the dollar as close as we can get it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much, everyone. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah, I really want to also chime here because, uh, you know, this is, what is this, my third budget, fourth budget, and it, this this is one of the major changes. Uh, it, is, it, it is so much better. I know it was a lot of work, but to all of you, really thank you. This this really reflects kind of what you should be, kind of uh, those two sides that that make make this whole so much better. It used to be really a uh, you know a scramble to to figure this out, and just it just goes so smoothly because it all makes sense. So thank you. This is this is one of the big highlights of 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 of, of the year on budgeting. Really, honestly, thank you. Well, I'd like to thank Augie and Laura and Jerry for their support. Augie and Laura like didn't sleep for a few nights. They were like, every night I was in there, Augie was, oh, Laura was in there at midnight. No, I'm kidding. She was there. And they, these guys were, and gals were working really late to help me. So I really appreciate that. Thanks, Jake.
Can I ask you a quick question on, on personnel going back to 108? Yeah. Um, any, any, uh, there's only one, from, from what I see there, there's only one uh, union person? One, one, one yeah, Char, um, our, we have one office assistant that's union and it's in my budget, but he works for myself and the, he helps my, me and Barry do our clerical work, bells, phones, messages, that sort of thing. And he's union. But he, he's on this, he's on, he's here, right? He's one, he's one. Yeah, he's on the bottom. So you'll see number 7140110.50. And then 150 is the uh, uh, the raise thing that they put in. Okay, a little thing. All right, okay, now I, that's what I was going to remember. Yeah, that's what, that's what you're talking about, right? And the rest, the rest, you're, you're all, you're all. Uh, We're all non-union, yeah, the rest. We're all non-union, okay. Yeah. So, and, and that's some minor changes there, but not, not big thing. Mm -mm. All right, nothing, nothing to. Okay. Good, clear here. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Anyone else with questions for Jason? No. Just thank All right. you. For... Um. I'm good. Jerry, you have any closing comments? No. Um, All right. We'll do this again tomorrow night. Yeah, we um, will. I want to thank Ed and Ellen for showing up. Yeah. And, um, yes, thank you. Attending. Appreciate the thank attention. You. Um, all right. Do I have a motion to close? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mute, mute, mute. Sorry, not me. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. Uh, uh, didn't we, we were going to go do a quick rundown to other uh, ex, uh, income? Didn't we say that? Revenue? Revenue, I'm sorry. It wasn't uh, that the discussion last night that we would go this to departments and, and look at revenue overall also? I, I understood that to be per department while we're working on each department, but we can, we can do that now. I just haven't finished because it was only, because I only had a short, a small portion of the day. I haven't finished okay. looking at those numbers. Okay, uh, I, that, that's 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 what was going to be my question. For example, yeah. uh, of course, the sales tax. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, what is it? The um, mortgage tax. Those things. When, when are we going to discuss those? The, the, those those are on the spreadsheet that I provided you. But but we can discuss them. Um, we can discuss them. Um, I just didn't have time to finish everything. I focused on. Uh, preparing Jason so he can make this presentation today and other things today. It, it okay. worked really smooth, so that's why I want to see what how if we make, but we should make progress on the other big, like ticket items like that. I know I saw there was some information I haven't read it from. from yeah. Today, but when are we going to do that? Um, Sorry, Kelly, but this is important. Uh, give me, give I, well, me. you know what? All I want to say is if we're going to start discussions again, let's. <laughs> I said, I'm clarifying what we were going to do today. I'm sorry. Give me. We've closed the meeting, so I don't think Victor heard that. So let's talk. I, I know. I know. <laughs> he heard it. He just I didn't, couldn't. I didn't speak. vote aye to close the meeting. I'm sorry. Well, should we reopen the meeting? Can no, we even do that? Then, then don't listen to me. That's fine. No, Victor, Victor. Victor, we were listening to you. Your mic wasn't on. Give me, give me a chance. I'm just doing something proactively. Very important is when are we going to discuss? The rest of, uh, of, of, of expenses. I'm just clarifying. I got a lot of emails today. I got some emails from Dan. I just. I understand the question, okay, Jerry. When can we discuss the other the expenses? It, it is not part of the meeting. So fine. If you want to go log out, log out. I just want to know. I, I, I have Jerry here, so I'm asking him. Uh, if you want to put it at the, the, at, the, at the end of tomorrow night's meeting, we, we can do that if that, okay. if that works. Okay. And this is I not just part don't of the have, meeting. I don't have everything meeting, tonight. Sorry, it's Kelly, but I just, just want to. Be clear that I'm not doing something that's totally off. You know, I understand, Victor, it, but it was going beyond a question and an answer into a discussion, and we shouldn't be doing that when we've already closed the meeting. That's all I'm saying. Well, but we've asked the question, we've gotten the answer, so now I think we can sign off, correct? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.